The market went back into correction for the week ended March 10th as it suffered its biggest weekly loss this year. You can see the, the NASDAQ here fell back below its 200-day moving average and on this one-year chart. And if we look at the S&P 500, whoops, you can see that it fell below. In spite of this, uh, the Golden Cross, it fell below its 200-day. So there's another of the major indices. And then if we let's take a look at the Russell 2000, and it's even in worse shape, had a bigger correction. The, the NASDAQ went down 4.5%, or 47 the S&P lost 45 and the Russell dropped 8.1%, as we can see here. Now I'm going to go to the ETF that we trade for the NASDAQ, and you can see it's the QQQ, which is the top 100 uh, companies in the in NASDAQ. Uh, looks very similar to the NASDAQ composite index itself. It all started with hot, hawkish testimony from Fed Chairman Powell before, as he testified before Congress on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then we had a hotter than expected jobs report on Friday. But the big news was the first major bank failure since 2008 with Silicon Valley Bank. That's a regional bank. And so obviously with a lot of Silicon Valley investments and they tried to, they got shut down by regulators as they sold their investments down, taking huge losses to raise capital. And my understanding is there's as many as 20 more banks out there. Um, you know, they, in the same situation. I want to go back to the NASDAQ. Composite it here. And I want to look at a two year longer time frame here. So you can see the NASDAQ is in this huge downtrend. And even though we were starting to get a little movement here and you were starting to get this 50 day headed towards the 200 day in a golden cross. You can see we're clearly back in correction mode here. And that is not good because it's, you know, it's it's down below. It's 11,600 here is what, what we consider resistance. And, uh, you know, it's just a heavy weekly hot loss. And again, let's look at the S&P 500. And it, even, it looks like it's in just as bad a shape. Again, we had the golden crossed here, and now we're it looks like we're going to give that back up. Now, turning to the ETFs that we trade, there's only two ETFs that uh, SMH that have any strength, and I'm going to go back to a one-year chart on this again. And that is the semiconductors, which you can see here, it's trading above its 50 day and its 200 day. So for us, that, that indicates that that's a strong ETF. And if I was looking to trade it, I would go long. Now let's look at uh, XLK, the technology sector. And not quite as strong, but it's got a similar look. We've got the Golden Cross and it's trading above or living above, closing above its 200-day and, it, and its 50-day moving average. But, oh, do we have uh, lots of weak, weak ones out there. We've got uh, five ETFs that were trading below both their 50-day and their 200-day their moving average. There's XLE. Just a week ago, that was looking like it was going to go higher, and now we're back below the 200-day moving average. And we got XME, which is metals and mining. Oh, I'm sorry, these are the ones that are 
below their 50 day, but they're above the 200 day. And then XHB, so they all look like they're headed towards the 200 day. Right now, if I had to guess, my YT just transports very close to its 200 day. And then uh, aerospace and defense. Now that's that's the strongest that one just recently made it 52 week high but you can see even the strong gets taken down when the market turns bearish and since we're in a correction mode that's what happens now all 14 of the other ETFs out there are definitely in in correction mode so let's take a look at the financial sector which was impacted by the regional banks this you know Silicon Valley Bank is not even in this index, and yet look at what happened to it. <laughs> it it got crushed. We don't even trade the regional banks because it's too volatile, and it's not enough. Don't have enough volume for my interest in being in trading that. But it would look much worse. So, what did we do about it? Well, let's take a look at our model. This is our model. Uh, this is year to date through March 10th, and then the month is down here. We've gained 8.9% for the month, so we're absolutely crushing the market on a monthly basis. There, we're beating both the S&P and the NASDAQ by 11.7 percentage points. Year to date, we're up 42%, and we're absolutely crushing both the NASDAQ and, of course, the S&P by 41.5 and the NASDAQ by almost 36 percentage points. Uh, you can uh, sign up for, become a patron for just 20 bucks a month by putting that in your browser and signing up. And, and you can follow me on YouTube. There's my channel right there. Okay, last but not least, let's take a look at the weekly heat map. Oh, boy. There's so much red on the screen that it hurts. It actually hurts my eyes. It is just amazing. But right away, you can see the big losers was the regional banks. And uh, there's SIVB down 79.5%. I think it's uh, this last one right now. Let's see. Yeah. That's, no, that's not it. It's hard to find it. You can see it over there. And then if we go just to the money center banks, they're taking it on the chin. There's there's Bank of America down 11.4% and Wells Fargo down 11.72%. And, you know, that wasn't the only ones that took took it on the chin. I mean, most everything else fell pretty precip precipitously. Well, there's Tesla down 12.3%. There's a little bit of green. There was Intel and AMD, semiconductor interest, and then GE. I don't know what happened there, but GE is a shadow of what it used to be. But that's the the biggest little winner, if you will, for the for the week. Well, that's all for this week's video. So next week we'll get the CPI and the PPI inflation data for February. But more importantly, we'll see Monday if any of the other 20 uh, regional banks that's been identified have similar problems to Silicon Valley Bank. I'm Greg Gallagher. Good luck and good trading.